Hey guys, it's Andy here from Precision Fitness. Hope you're having a good day. Just wanted to take a couple of minutes today to talk to you about a couple of the common misconceptions uh, actually surrounding personal training as a profession slash service, I suppose. Basically, one of the things is that a lot of people seem to think that personal training is something that's only really for those who have got a high level of disposable income, um, aka lots of that. It's not. I mean, I've, I've trained anyone from like sort of someone who works in a checkout in a supermarket right up to people who are sort of chief executives of, of sort of multi-million pound companies as well. Um, so it really does take all sorts. It's not so much about how much money someone's got and what they can afford, it's what they want to afford and what they want to get out of it. Some of the most, in fact, probably the most committed people that I've had to actually achieving their results have been the guys who... who don't have a pile of disposable income because it means that much more to them. If someone sort of saved up a, a load of money for you know three, four, five, six months, however long, um, and then they're gonna say, right, Andy, bang, here's my money, do what you gotta do, then they're gonna be that much more committed because because they know just how much they've had to sort of uh, put into actually being able to afford it. So they're gonna go pedal to the metal and actually 110% get the job done. Um, some people that who have got a lot of money and you know it doesn't mean quite so much to them. It's more of um, they see it as more of a an asset, I suppose, more of something to talk about to to their friends or something. Um, when I've had people like that in the past, I just bin them because I'm there to give people results. Not not I'm not there for someone to stand around chatting crap to in a nutshell. Yeah, you've got to be friendly to people and yeah, I love I love working with people, but if people aren't gonna work with me and, and sort of get the results then you know I, I just bit them off because I'd much rather give my time to someone who's actually gonna put the effort in and, and, and actually get the results out of it and you know make the most of their investment in, in my services. So end of the day, it's not about how much money you got, it's about how willing and committed you are to actually buy into the program and then go sort of pedal to the metal because I can't even talk pedal to the metal to actually achieving that goal <clears throat> the second sort of thing that I see quite a lot is people saying that I can't come and train yet because I'm not fit enough uh, well this is the biggest part of crap I've ever read because surely if you're really 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 unfit and you know that you need some some uh, guidance then you're going to jump straight to the guidance and as opposed to saying oh, I'll just get myself in a bit better shape before I start training if your trainer's skilled enough and if they've got you know, two bloody brain cells, then they're going to know that if you're coming to them as an absolute novice, you're really out of shape, um, maybe you hate exercise, they're going to know that they ain't going to start you off on the hardest program going. Um, it should, if it, the whole essence of it being personal is the fact that it's going to be for you as an individual as opposed to the, to the last six guys he's trained. Um, to get around this myself, I conduct a full, pretty thorough health and fitness assessment first off, um, which in which we go through a pile of different stuff from sort of uh, all the basics like body fat, weight, height, measurement, uh, circumference measurements, right up to like a postural assessment, some kinetic chain assessment protocols, um, as well as some sort of functional movement tests as well. After we've done that, we uh, get the program planned out based on exactly what they can do, what they want to be able to do, what they've got the time to do and, and all that sort of stuff. And then I'll make sure that I plan the program out for three to six months so it's sort of periodized and the client knows and I know that they're going to be able to develop from A to B to C to D until we get to the end target weight goal, whatever it is, over at Z over there. <clears throat> so it's not too hard for you to come and do uh, training, personal training, whatever. You may be in bad shape right now, but it's what I tell people is it ain't about where you're starting, it's where you're going to be finishing. So who gives a toss about if we're sat here on A, when in 6, 12, however many months, you're going to be over there at Z, looking, feeling and moving better than you ever thought possible. So that's the big one with that. Um, the third and probably the most common one that I hear is that, or that I see, or people sort of um, give off that sort of aura kind of, I don't know, I don't know. The, one of the most common things, basically, I can't even speak properly, is that by employing a personal trainer one, two, three, four, however many times a week, 
that you're just going to get results like that. Doesn't happen like that. If it did, then I'm sure everyone would have a trainer. Just by employing a personal trainer and seeing them a couple of times a week doesn't mean that you're going to get results. The only way you're going to get results is if you're actually going to buy into it, commit to it, and get your ass in shape outside of time with your trainer. So that means doing the workouts they give you, sticking to the nutritional program they give you, and actually, you know, as I said, committing to it and, and, and wanting to get it done. <clears throat> Unfortunately, there's no way that I've found yet that I can actually train for a client and get them amazing results while they sit on their ass uh, at work or watching Desperate Housewives. So until there is such a time as I can sort of do that, then the clients have, have got to put the work in. Um, what I always make sure that I do is ensure that there's a, a big sort of support network around them. So obviously they'll be seeing me sort of X amount of times per week in sessions. So when they're, they're obviously when they're with me they're going to be motivated they're going to know exactly what they've got to do because I'll be right there telling them but outside of time with me then they're going to have a full blueprint if you will um, so they, they know exactly what they need to do outside of their time that they spend with me in addition to that I make sure I'm always emailing them sort of every uh, every one, two, three sometimes sometimes as little as every four days but just sending them little reminders have you done this, have you done that are you eating this, are you eating that how are you getting on the diet how's the programme going um all that sort of stuff, just to make sure they're staying on track. Um, and another big thing is just to make sure that the client's actually accountable and that they understand from the off that the programs and the systems that I have in place are going to work, but the only way they're going to work is if they pull their finger out and they do the work themselves. Okay, so that's just about it, I think. I think we covered probably my top three in terms of the actual misconceptions surrounding personal training so i hope that's been of some use to you have a fantastic day and i'll catch you again soon take care